In this clip, I review a student's compose file for using Elasticsearch in production using Docker Swarm stacks and give them advice on how to improve it. So, um, we're going to go fast. All right. And then we're going to end the show because we're past our hour, but uh, I want to get you guys some feedback. All right. So the first one up is Jacob. And uh, there's a whole lot of documentation here. And the, I love documentation Docker files, by the way. It's totally fine to put as much as you want. This is actually a YAML file. So now we're talking about Compose. But documentation in Docker files or Compose files, either way, always a good thing. All right. So he's using a version 3.7, which means it's probably for Swarm or something in production like Kubernetes using the Compose on Kubernetes feature set. He's using the official Elastic uh, images from the Elastic there. Um, let's see. You got your health check. Fantastic. You got health checks. That's great. You got configs. That's great. You're setting it on a specific network. And you're doing host mode on the port, so you're giving this direct access to the uh, NIC instead of going through the overlay networks and the uh, routing mesh. That's good. And then, let's see, oops. We got to deploy down here. Oh, and you're doing endpoint mode DNS round robin. So kudos to you. This is something that a lot of people don't realize, but whenever you're running something in Swarm and you want to disable the virtual IP that sits in front of every overlay service, you want to do that for databases where you only have one node, right? Which is a lot of times, even if you're doing a mirror of a database, you're usually running each one of those in their own service. And so there's one instance in a service and that, that task or that instance of a container, you don't usually want that virtual IP in front of it because it's now an extra hop. It's another NAT translation. It's, it's more potential problems. So if you set endpoint mode to DNS round robin here, that effectively turns off the VIP and has direct access to that container. So kudos to you. Uh, I don't see that very often because people don't catch that one. And then you're also using replicas too and resource limits of 4G, 4 gig. That's great. Always, I recommend always setting resource limits and reservations if you can because that's going to help things all get along inside your cluster. Um, yeah, it looks like it's yeah running on Docker Swarm. Sweet. And yeah, coordination, master. All right, more, more of the same. More of the same good stuff, good stuff. You're bind mounting uh, a volume, or you're not bind, bind, bind mounting, you're using a named volume. And... You've got placement constraints here. So you're putting this on a node that is hard coded to a specific name. So you know you want this one to run on that node only. And of course the weakness here is that, that if that node goes down, it won't be able to place it anywhere else, but hopefully you've um, taken that into consideration. Yeah, all right, master two. So that's how you're doing this. It looks like you have master one, master two, hard coded in as separate services and master three. Um, and a lot of people have to do it this way, that when you have a multi-node database cluster, it's usually easier to put each one of these as their own service, and so you've done that. And it would be nice if we could just make one service with three replicas. And you can find that with some examples using the autopilot pattern. If you look up autopilot pattern IO, or if you just Google your database technology with the word autopilot, Sometimes you can find configurations and automation scripts that will help you do it all in one service. There's pros and cons to each. I personally tend to just do it the way you're doing it. Uh, it I feel like it's simpler, even though it's more YAML and it's a little bit more verbose. One thing you could do here, one huge improvement, is if these are all, all the same parts here, right? All the same stuff, you can template that, shorten this file significantly by only putting that in a template block. And I talk more about that in um, this, this right here, Jacob, I'll put this in chat. This is three different advanced Docker Compose features that a lot of people don't use. And one of them is 
on templating. And so if you see the example here, you can uh, you can throw, throw the templating right there. Uh, basically what you're saying is, this is what I want in the template, and this is where I want you to put it over and over in each image, or in each service, rather. And so a lot of that boilerplate stuff, like you could template the whole thing, or you could just template parts of them and have multiple templates, uh, and Docker has documentation on that. So that would help make your file smaller, and uh, we call it dry, right? Doing it, uh, doing things once. Don't repeat yourself, D-R-Y, and you could do that. So that would help you alleviate a lot of this repetitive stuff, especially around the health checks and the deployment stuff. So then you've got your data nodes, everything's looking good there, you're using your health checks, you've got your network set, your volumes, and let me go down past some of this. Your hard coding stuff to each node. And I and I really wish um, that we had a way to tell it don't run, like here's a placements constraint. Run don't run it on one that is where the other ones run. So there's some hope for you. There's two things you can do here. You can look at placement preferences. And if you have your different nodes in availability zones and you simply want your database to make sure that it has one copy in each availability zone, like an AWS or something, then you can add labels to each node. And then you just go in here and say, I would prefer you to spread these out over my label and you just give it a label and the placement preference instead of a constraint will allow it to put those on the different um, different servers in the different zones. But the cool thing here is if one zone or one server goes down, it will still be able to reassign that somewhere else. Now the worst case here is that two of these are running on the same server, but that's probably not so bad if you're able to, I mean, one thing might be the data, getting the data from one zone over the other, but um, once you've solved some of those problems, yeah, yeah, you're saying, uh, so I can use constraint and allow to lose one of the physical nodes. Yeah, so the, the thing here is you're, you're making it a little bit more brittle by assigning it to node host names and you have to have those specific hosts up. And ideally, like if you're in AWS or something where you can have your servers auto-create, so if the server dies, it all creates a new one. Um, yeah, so if you've accounted for all that, great. Uh, there's nothing wrong with placement constraints in this way. It just means that those nodes have to be there or those containers die. The other thing is there is a new feature coming in 1903. And the way you learn about these new features is if you do go to Docker uh, on GitHub and you go to Docker CE releases, and I will post this in chat. And you can look up new Swarm features, and there is a new Swarm feature version version that will allow you to run replicas, but tell it never mo run more than X of these replicas on the same node. Super cool feature and helps people ensure that their databases don't all get assigned the same node. So you might want to check that out as a more flexible way to ensure they're not on the same node. Um, I think if I scroll down, down to Swarm, yeah, added support for maximum replicas per node. So that's a new feature in the forthcoming 1903 release that's already in pre-release now. So we should be seeing this within the next few weeks or month. Um, and then you can check that out. That might help you with the constraints. All right, I'm gonna move ahead a little bit. Sorry, I can't review all this, but I'm gonna jump down to the bottom. Uh, you got your networks, uh, attachable true and proxy. Um, all looks good there. You got volume. So you're using the default volume driver. Uh, so that that way, that means that all of this data is stuck on the node that it's on. Uh, if you have any shared storage, you might consider Rexray or another volume driver so that you can get that storage off that disk. And that way, when one of the nodes fails and it wants to create that somewhere else, it will reattach that database volume on the other node, right? So you maybe have already looked at that. Um, and you got traffic certificates. So uh, I could talk about that for a while, but I, we're gonna run out of time. So I'll, I'll leave the traffic certificate stuff for another day. And then you've got configs and uh, other files, because this is great, all the, using all the configs um, as, as you should. And then I don't see secrets in here, but I'm assuming at some point you're gonna need secrets and you might need to store those in secrets somewhere. So um, other than that, great YAML. 
Uh, definitely one of the better ones I've seen. I think uh, there's very little to do here, I think, in terms of making it sort of using all the perfect features. The templating is a thing, considering different volume drivers and considering the new feature, if not placement preferences, the new feature for max replicas per node. Thanks for watching. You can click subscribe and the notification bell to get an alert when I go live so you can join and ask your DevOps and Docker questions. You can watch some of my other videos over there and you can do what I'm about to do and just go take a nap. <laughs>